We all know the third rule of safe gun handling is keep the firearm unloaded until you're ready to use it. What that means is, once we've loaded it, of course, we have to unload it in order to store it. Well, for hunting and self-defense firearms, that's a pretty common situation. And it can be tricky to do it in a safe manner, especially if you're unfamiliar with the action or how to unload the firearm. Hi, I'm Jim Humphrey with Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training, and today I want to show you how to unload a variety of firearms. First, I want to point out I'm using dummy ammunition here today. Always use dummy ammunition when you're learning how to unload a firearm for the first time. And while I've collected a pretty good selection of firearms, it's by no means a comprehensive selection. If you come across a firearm you haven't uh, seen before, well, refer to the owner's manual or seek out the advice of someone who has experience with that firearm. And when you're learning these skills for the first time, go see an experienced firearms instructor for assistance. So let's start with the 870. We've been in the field hunting, so let's load it up. With our finger off the trigger, safety on, muzzle point in safe direction. We're going to press on the action release button right here in front of the trigger guard. Bring the action back a little bit. I'm going to block the movement of the action with my middle finger. Bring it back until the first shell in the chamber just begins to come out where I grab my index finger, pull it out, set it aside. Now I push up on the carrier, bring the action back the rest of the way, and that shell drops out into my hand. I have to do the same thing with progressive shells. Once this firearm has been unloaded, I now need to clear it. So clearing is a different process. The clearing process is, while it differs from some firearms, it is uh, fundamentally pretty much the same. I'm going to check the chamber's empty, I'm going to check the magazine's empty. I'm going to do it visually and physically. So I'm going to look down at the chamber, look at it, touch it, it's empty. And I'll do the same thing with the magazine tube. I can see it's empty, touch it with my finger. I'm going to look away. I cause my eyes to focus at distance, come back and do the same thing again. Visually and physically check the chamber and the magazine well. If I have a friend here, I'll have the friend do it. Uh, this is an administrative task, and I really want to take my time in doing this uh, to absolutely ensure this firearm's unloaded and safe to put away. Uh, this method where I uh, use the action to pull the shells out works on, on the 870, certainly works on most shotguns. Uh, what you may find is it, it, another method you need to use is a method in which you uh, press the shell latches. You bring the action back about that same distance. You reach inside and push on the shell latches and the shells will come out too. The shell latches inside on the side of the receiver. So, let's have a look at a number of other firearms. The Mossberg pump has a top slide safety and the action release is behind the trigger guard. Because of the action, I have to unload the magazine first. Some shells will catch and have to be pulled up a little bit. Some will slide straight out. I remove the shell in the chamber last. I prefer to unload the chamber first, but that doesn't work on Mossbergs and Ithacas. The Ithaca pump has a push button safety. It's behind the trigger guard and the action release is in front. It unloads just like the Mossberg. On this Winchester pump, the safety is in front of the trigger guard and the action release is behind the trigger guard. The shells can be ejected using the shell latches or the action technique like the 870. There are quite a variety of safeties and action releases. This Weatherby has a push button safety and a side lever that releases the action. Whatever the type of safety, generally it has a positive click and the action release is generally spring loaded. The safety on this type of brake action gun is a top slide safety. Keeping your finger off the trigger and the gun pointing in a safe direction, press the top lever to the right, then open the shotgun. 
shells can be pulled from chambers. On this semi-auto shotgun, keep the firearm pointing in a safe direction, engage the safety, press down on the carrier, and reach in and press on the shell latches, releasing the shells. Lock the bolt to the rear. As a rule, we don't want to unload a firearm by running rounds through the chamber, but on this type of lever action, we have no choice. Keep your finger off the trigger, keep the firearm pointing in a safe direction, and carefully work the action, removing the rounds. On tube-fed firearms, keep the firearm pointing in a safe direction, engage the safety, or in this case, ensure the hammer is forward. Keep your finger off the trigger. Remove the feed tube without placing your hand in front of the muzzle. Dump the rounds and open the action. On this military firearm, the safety is engaged by pulling it back into the trigger guard. The magazine releases this tab behind the magazine. Push it forward and rock the magazine out. Pull back on the operating rod handle and lock the bolt to the rear by holding the bolt catch and releasing the handle. Note, this is a perfect example of why you must physically and visually inspect the chamber and the magazine well. This round failed to extract. If this was a live round, and if the bolt was left forward, this firearm would still be loaded. On the M1 Grand, the safety is engaged by pulling it back into the trigger guard. This is the clip latch. To remove the ammunition, the operating rod handle must be pulled all the way back and held, and then the clip latch depressed. The clip will eject forcefully, so here I'm careful to control the clip when it is released. With the clip removed, the operating rod and bolt are retained in the open bolt position. On this Soviet military style firearm, this is the safety, this is the bolt catch, this is the magazine release, this is the bolt handle. Engage the safety by lifting it up. Remove the magazine. Now disengage the safety, press up in the bolt catch, and lock the bolt to the rear. It is not common for this type of firearm to have a bolt catch, so typically you must clear the chamber by holding the bolt to the rear. On bolt action rifles, engage the safety which will generally be on the back of the bolt. They will sometimes have a magazine door that will facilitate dumping the ammunition. Keeping your finger off the trigger and the firearm pointing in a safe direction, open the bolt and remove any remaining ammunition. The safety on the Winchester Model 70 is on the back of the bolt. This is the safe position. And on the Mossberg, it's a slide switch. Here I move it from safe to fire. On the Remington 700, the safety is a toggle switch. And the magazine door release is inside the trigger guard. On this popular 22 semi-auto, the safety is a push button in front of the trigger guard. The magazine release is a square flush button behind the magazine, which you push to remove the magazine. Pull the bolt to the rear, remove any rounds from the chamber. The bolt catches a tab in front of the trigger guard. Now lock the bolt to the rear. On what is likely America's most popular rifle, the selector switch is on the left side of the rifle. Rotate the switch to safe. Also on this side is the bolt catch. On the right side of the rifle is the magazine release button. Remove the magazine. To lock the bolt open, pull back on the charging handle and push in on the bottom of the bolt catch and release the charging handle. Press the charging handle forward to lock it in place. On the full auto Thompson, this is the magazine release. 
This is the safety. This is the selector switch. A noticeable difference with this type of firearm is it fires from the bolt open position. So it's necessary to pull the trigger to lower the action and leave it forward on an empty chamber to be safe. The method for unlatching the cylinder on a revolver varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. On Colts, you typically pull back on the cylinder latch. On Smith & Wessons, you typically push it forward. On Ruger's, you typically push it in. There are other types. For example, this Dan Wesson, you pull down on a latch mounted in front of the cylinder. Here's an older top brake revolver. The cylinder is unlocked by pulling up on the crossbar on top. On single action revolvers, the mechanics vary but the ejector rod can be pushed through each cylinder chamber. It's a good idea to empty at least twice as many cylinder chambers as you think you have. Otherwise, on most models, the cylinder can be removed. On this Ruger, depress the base pin latch, pull the base pin, and with the loading gate open and the hammer back a very small amount, the cylinder will slide out. On this converted uh, Remington 1858, the cylinder is removed by pulling down on the loading lever and removing the base pin. Then, with the hammer back a very small amount, the cylinder will slide out. Of course, keep the revolver pointed in a safe direction. This double action, single action semi-auto pistol has a decock lever, a slide stop lever, and notice the hammer is cocked. It has a magazine release on the butt of the grip. First it must be decocked, then the magazine removed. The slide should be pulled back forcefully to clean the eject a round that might be in the chamber. The slide is locked back by holding up the slide stop lever and working the slide. This H and K has a magazine release that is a lever at the bottom of the trigger guard. This can be found on some other German pistols like the Walther. A more classic single action semi-auto has a push button magazine release and a thumb safety. With the hammer back, the safety should be engaged. The magazine removed, and then in order to eject any round in the chamber, the safety must be disengaged. Always keep your finger off the trigger, keep the pistol pointed in a safe direction. Then lock the slide to the rear. Well, I hope you found that educational. Now you need to work with a skilled instructor to get it right. I'm Jim Humphrey with Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training. Keep training. Be safe out there. Join the NRA. Thanks. Mm -hmm.